happy son of a bitch who wrote this fuck apocalypse? Why else would the goddamn avatar have to ask all these stupid fucking questions? How do I get to pause? You should know this because you've been there in four Ultima games. Your knowledge of the land shall be great. I swear to God, I'm gonna find the donut puncher who wrote this piece of bitch and make him shit his own fucking teeth. Why are you so unpleasant? Why are you such an asshole? Do you take me for a common fool? Fuck me, the voice acting sucks right across the board. But how mad should I really be at the actors when the script is so fucking irredeemably horrible? The Avatar character is completely destroyed and turned into a mockery, completely devoid of depth, and acting completely out of character given his backstory. And I don't even know how you can really write the Avatar out of character, given that pretty much all of his dialogue up to this point was name, job, and buy. But I can't cut the actors any slack, they're all fucking terrible! This guy makes the Avatar sound like he used to play football in high school until he fell out of a fucking pickup truck and hit his head. Sure, let's go! This was the best they could do? This ass master couldn't act wet in a thunderstorm. I mean, granted, I don't know who the fuck could act well enough to somehow make this script suck less. It ain't exactly Shakespeare we're dealing with. The Avatar is voiced by J.C. Shakespeare. We are literally watching Shakespearean acting. Why do I find you so attractive? You know... I gotta show you this bit. It's skipping ahead a little bit, but fuck it. I'm gonna show you the absolute worst line in the entire fucking game. And just think about that for a second. Given all the shit we've seen up to now, and we're not even 20 minutes into this game. Yeah. It's when you go to another city called Trinsic, which is the City of Honor. <laughs> you are not gonna believe this shit. How are you today? I thought that I knew all of the paladins around here. What's a paladin? <laughs> What's a paladin? What's a paladin? What's a paladin? What's a paladin? Show it again. What's a paladin? Again. What's a paladin? Again. What's a paladin? What's a paladin? What's a paladin? What's a paladin? You know, when I first played this game a long time ago, I had to stop right there. I, ha I had to. I had to get up and walk away. And I, it must have taken me a week or two weeks before I could even play this fucking game again. Because that line, what's a paladin, is so bad. And it's not because of the voice acting. Not entirely. I mean, trust me, the voice acting there is the stuff of fucking legend. But that's not it. It's the line itself. It's It's offensive. It's offensive to every loyal fan who ever paid money for an Ultima game. It's, it's a middle finger right up the ass to anyone who ever gave a shit, who ever got emotionally invested in the story or the characters. Why? Well, not only has the Avatar been around Paladins since before he was the fucking Avatar, one of his closest friends and oldest, most stalwart companions through every adventure, Sir Dupre, he was a paladin who literally sacrificed his life by jumping into a cremation oven alive in the Avatar's place to save the entire world and the cosmos as we know it. It was one of the most moving, shocking character deaths in gaming history. And how, oh how, does the Avatar remember his noble sacrifice? What's a paladin? What's a paladin? Fuck you! I haven't even started this game, and everywhere I turn I see something I could bitch about for hours! The worst thing in Britain is the Museum of the Avatar, and I still cannot believe how badly botched this was. They got absolutely every single thing wrong in this fucking building. First of all, you talk to the curator of the museum, who complains to you that people in Britain are mean and cruel now, but why isn't she affected by the columns like everyone else is? Oh, Avatar, do you think that you can find the lost runes? Please, refresh my memory about the runes. What's a paladin? She tells you that the rune stones of the Eight Virtues that were kept in the museum were stolen like 20-some years ago. But if that's true, why is there still broken glass all over the fucking floor? Has nobody swept up in decades? Betrayed me! I don't know, maybe it wouldn't happen if there were, uh, guards in here? Just saying? Gotta think of it, there's basically nobody in here at all. Why the fuck am I hearing sounds like the room is filled with hundreds of people? I'm hearing the voices again! Over the years, various people have tried to locate the rooms. 
but so far, no one has. Well, gee, I don't know. Have you tried looking in the huge fuck-off glowing columns of evil? Why in the hell has nobody bothered to investigate the huge, obviously evil columns in 20 fucking years? Lord Briston sent anybody? Oh, I can see the motherfucker's a real busy guy. Don't hurt yourself on that throne, Rich. Does nobody in Britannia have any fucking initiative whatsoever? I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, check out the exhibits in the museum. Look at this. Mondane Skull. Are you fucking kidding me? Mondane Skull. An item which, when used, can just casually eradicate all life on the planet, and it's just sitting here under a glass display case, completely unguarded. You're telling me some pissant kid could just wander in here, bump into the goddamn case, knock it over, and accidentally destroy the fucking planet. Now this shit didn't get in here anyway, considering we threw the thing into a fucking volcano and destroyed it to open the Stygian Abyss. Betrayal! Oh, wow. I guess I'm worrying over nothing. I suppose it's safe here. It's not like anyone would just come into the museum, smash the cases open, and steal things. Oh, right! This game sucks! Then there's the four cards from Ultima 3, which you use to destroy Exodus, which also could not possibly have survived. Betrayal! There's the Silver Horn from Ultima 4, which looks completely different from the last time you saw it in other games, when it was frigging huge and bigger than you are. Betrayed me! Oh, and there's the Talisman of Infinity, which was also either destroyed or sent to the Void along with the Dark Core of Exodus from Forge of Virtue, and is also an inconsistent shape from the way appeared in that game. Be betrayal! Corgan's Fang is here, which is fucking amazing considering it's a weapon that came from fucking Pagan, and according to the fucking intro, I returned to Earth from Pagan, and so the fucking thing could never have gotten here in the first fucking place! Betrayal! How does anyone in Britain even know about Pagan? I've seen your face on the tapestry! Well, perhaps they saw it on the Tapestry of Ages, which is something the writers just pulled completely out of their ass for this game, for what reason, I really don't know. It's just here now, and the way it's explained, it's just some kind of magic tapestry that started out blank, and every time you arrive in Britannia, parts of it fill in by magic to show your destiny or some fucking thing. But guess what? I mean, even the tapestry is so full of plot holes, it's a wonder I can't fucking see through it. Mondain creates the gem of immortality to solidify his future as supreme evil overlord. In the books, Mondain didn't create the gem of immortality, he stole it when he murdered his father, and that gem was a ruby, and when Mondane twisted its magic to evil, it turned black. It was never fucking yellow. Be, be, Except in the game Ultima 1 when you see it, and it shouldn't be yellow, the book says. And the Avatar never actually fought Exodus with a sword, because it was indestructible, he had to destroy it by putting computer cards into it. Betrayal! Why does the Avatar have an onk on his tabard in games that took place before Ultima 4? Because the Ankh is the symbol of the Avatar, and he wasn't the Avatar in Ultimas 1, 2, or 3. Betrayed me! Likewise, why is he always using the same sword in every single panel? I bring this up because the only way to kill Minax in Ultima 2 is to use the magic quicksword. And remember how much of a pain in the ass it was to get that one? In Ultima 7, you had the Black Sword, which was world infamous, and you'd think the tapestry might point it out, since it was, you know, only the most powerful weapon ever crafted that could kill anyone with a thought. But whatever, since the Avatar didn't smash the fucking Black Gate with a sword, he used a magic wand. And this is a big one because you can't smash Blackrock with physical force, you have to use magic. Why the fuck does Lord British have white hair in Ultima 4? Did he invent just for men hair color when you see him in Ultima 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and just now run out when you see him in Ultima 9? I'm not entirely sure. Yolo also didn't have white hair in Ultima 5. Blackthorn had longer hair when you see him at the end of Ultima 5, and in that scene when he gets exiled, he wasn't chained up. In Ultima 6, Yolo used a crossbow to kill the gargoyle priest, not a regular longbow. Come to think of it, where are all the crossbows in Britannia in Ultima 9? There's no crossbows to be seen everywhere. It's all longbows. Yolo always used a crossbow, but now he's been changed into a master longbowman? What the fuck? Isn't the gargoyle priest supposed to be holding the Book of Prophecies in this illustration? It was kind of sort of important in that it was the impetus for the entire fucking story of Ultima 6. Lord British's crown is inconsistent from when you see it in every other game. Where's the tattoo the Avatar got in his face on Serpent Isle? 
It's not in the tapestry, and it's not on his face now. Oh, and this panel is fucking ridiculous, too. This is supposed...